This video is brought to you by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. So the object itself likely is more massive than the Earth, probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between that terrestrial to giant icy planet range. Its orbit, unlike the orbits of the known planets, is not nearly circular and planar. Instead, it is exceptionally wide, 20 times bigger than the orbit of Neptune. It's just a tiny speck, a faint dot hidden in old telescope data from two sky surveys taken 23 years apart. And yet, this faint dot might be one of the biggest discoveries of our time. Because if this turns out to be what scientists think it is, it could be the long-rumored Planet Nine. But why do astronomers even think Planet Nine exists in the first place? In 1781, an English astronomer named William Herschel was scanning the sky with a telescope he built himself. He was looking for comets, but instead, he stumbled upon a new object that didn't quite behave like a comet. Over time, astronomers realized this object was orbiting the sun like a planet, slow, steady, and distant. They named it Uranus. But with more observations, astronomers realized Uranus didn't move the way Newton's laws said it should. Its orbit wobbled, just slightly, but enough to raise eyebrows. A French mathematician named Urbain Le Verrier worked it out with pencil and paper and concluded that maybe there was another planet pulling on Uranus. He even calculated where this mystery planet had to be, based entirely on Uranus's strange behavior. And when astronomers pointed their telescopes at that spot in the sky, lo and behold, they found Neptune, right where the math said it would be. Now let's fast forward to 2016. Two scientists, Mike Brown and Constantin Bodigan from Caltech, noticed something strange. They were looking at the orbits of a few distant objects in the Kuiper Belt when they noticed a pattern. These orbits weren't random. They were clustered, tilted in the same direction, as if something massive was tugging on them. When Mike and Constantin followed the data, it led them to a wild possibility. The only thing that could explain the strange orbits of these Kuiper Belt objects was a hidden planet, something five to ten times the mass of Earth, far beyond Pluto, so far, in fact, that we might never see it with visible light. They called it Planet Nine. And ever since, astronomers have been on its trail, chasing shadows at the edge of the solar system. Now, the farther away something is, the harder it is to see, especially if it doesn't reflect much sunlight. So to find Planet Nine, scientists went digging through two infrared surveys of the sky. One taken by the IRS satellite back in 1983 and another by Japan's Akari mission between 2006 and 2011. Which brings us to the latest development. A team led by astronomer at the National Tsinghua University in Taiwan did something clever. They looked for objects that showed up in both surveys, but not in the same place. The idea is that if something moved slightly between the two time periods, it might be orbiting the sun just very, very slowly. Now, this isn't like tracking a comet blazing through the sky. Planet Nine, if it's there, would be moving at about three arc minutes per year. That is tiny. To put that in perspective, the full moon is about 1800 arc minutes wide. So how do you even spot something like that? That's where parallax comes in. You know when you hold a finger in front of your face, close one eye, then switch to the other, and your finger seems to jump sideways. That is parallax. In space, we use Earth's orbit around the sun to create the same effect. By observing the sky from different points in Earth's orbit, astronomers can detect slight shifts in the position of distant objects. And with enough time, you can use those shifts to estimate how far away something is and whether it's moving. Based on this, the team's search for objects that showed up in the same place at the same time every year, canceling out parallax. Then, they narrowed it down further by checking if those objects were slowly drifting over time. And eventually, they found one. A faint dot in the IRA's data from 1983. And another dot, 47 arc minutes away, 
in the Akari data from 2006. Could it be the same object? Could it be Planet 9? Possibly. Because based on its brightness in the infrared data, it would have to be more massive than Neptune. So, what happens next? Before that, let's quickly hear from today's sponsor, Squarespace, which offers the best tools for easy website design. With their AI-backed design intelligence, creating your unique digital identity is fun, effortless, and quick. Their website design system called Fluid Engine lets you customize every design detail with this extremely helpful drag-and-drop technology. Squarespace also has built-in analytics so that you can easily track who's coming across your new page. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com territory to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to Planet 9. Well, if we know roughly where it was in 2006, we can try to spot it again with powerful optical telescopes. But here's the problem. In the years since Akari spotted it, this object would have moved. And we don't know where, but we do have tools that can help. The dark energy camera in Chile, for instance, has a wide enough field of view to scan the right region of sky. And soon, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory will come online, offering even deeper and broader surveys of the sky. So it's possible, even likely, that if this object is real and still glowing faintly, we'll see it again. But not everyone is convinced. Mike Brown, who helped propose the Planet Nine theory, took a look at the data himself. And while he doesn't rule it out entirely, he's skeptical because the orbit of this candidate object doesn't line up. Planet Nine, as predicted, should have an orbit tilted about 15 to 20 degrees from the plane of the solar system. This new object's tilt looks more like 120 degrees. That means it's not just tilted, it's orbiting in the opposite direction from most planets. In Brown's words, that doesn't mean it's not there, but it means it's not Planet Nine. What do you think? Just because we found something unusual doesn't mean it's the thing we've been looking for. Either way, one thing is clear. This mystery dot, whether it's Planet Nine or not, is going to keep astronomers busy. Because out there, in the cold and the dark, something is moving. However, there's another explanation for the strange orbits of the Kuiper Belt objects, one that doesn't require Planet Nine to exist. Our solar system may have had an incredibly close encounter with another passing star. Not one but two recent studies propose that a stellar flyby could account for the strange orbits of certain objects on the outskirts of our solar system, as well as some of the unusual moons orbiting nearby planets. This encounter, according to the research, was astonishingly close. A rogue star passed within 110 astronomical units of the Sun, meaning it came 110 times the distance from the Sun to Earth. To give some context, this star would have approached us even closer than the Voyager 1 probe, which after being launched is now 164 astronomical units away on its journey beyond the solar system. Given that the nearest star to us today, Proxima Centauri, is more than four light years away, this was an incredibly close call. Such a near miss, the researchers suggest, would be necessary to explain the unusual and chaotic orbits of celestial objects located in the farthest regions of our solar system beyond Neptune's orbit. To investigate whether a passing star's gravity could be responsible for the unusual orbits of some of the trans-Neptunian objects, the scientists ran over 3,000 computer simulations. Their findings not only confirmed the hypothesis, but revealed something fascinating. The simulations showed that this stellar encounter could explain two of the most peculiar trans-Neptunian objects, which have retrograde orbits, meaning they move in the opposite direction of the planets. It could also account for the distant dwarf planet Sedna, which orbits as far as 937 astronomical units from the Sun. Amith Govind, co-author and astrophysicist, noted that the simulations pointed to a star, slightly smaller than our Sun, at about 0.8 solar masses, passed within a little less than four times the distance from the Sun to Neptune. Interestingly, this event could also explain the strange moons in our solar system, such as Saturn's moon Phoebe, which has a retrograde and distant orbit. Similarly, Jupiter and Neptune host several irregular moons that could have been trans-Neptunian objects displaced by the gravitational influence of this stellar flyby. 
This could explain why the outer planets have two distinct types of moons. Regular moons, which formed along with the planets and have stable, predictable orbits, and irregular moons, which have strange or retrograde, that is, backward orbits, and may have been captured from the outer solar system. If this star had a close encounter with our solar system billions of years ago, it could be a remarkable chapter that may have been overlooked. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments to let me know. Meanwhile, we have found something strange at the edge of the solar system. Launched in 2006, NASA's New Horizons is one of the fastest spacecraft ever built, blazing through space at over 36,000 miles per hour. Its primary mission was to explore Pluto, a once mysterious icy world lurking in the dim outskirts of the solar system, over 3 billion miles from the Sun. In 2015, New Horizons made its historic flyby of Pluto, unveiling a landscape that looked like something out of science fiction. With towering ice mountains, plains of frozen nitrogen that stretch for hundreds of miles, and glaciers that seem to flow like rivers. But New Horizons didn't stop at Pluto. The spacecraft pushed onward into the eerie and largely unexplored Kuiper Belt, a colossal ring of frozen bodies and ancient debris that circles the Sun beyond Neptune. This vast region, spanning a staggering 2 billion miles, is a frozen graveyard of the solar system's formation, littered with icy rocks, dwarf planets, and comets that have been preserved in a deep freeze for billions of years. In 2019, New Horizons performed the most distant flyby in history, zipping past Arakoth, an oddly shaped object resembling a flattened snowman. This strange reddish KBO formed from two smaller bodies that gently merged gave scientists a direct glimpse into the building blocks of planets. Today, from over 5 billion miles away from its home planet, New Horizons is still sending data back, transmitting faint signals that take over six hours to reach Earth. But the spacecraft's work is far from over, and it is heading out deeper into the solar system, and currently it is at 60 astronomical units from the Sun. One astronomical unit is equal to 93 million miles, which is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. And at a distance of 60 astronomical units from the Sun, the New Horizons spacecraft has made a groundbreaking discovery, revealing something unexpected in the distant reaches of the solar system. The vast distance of the Kuiper belt from the Sun means that anything within the belt is very minimally affected by solar radiation. That, in turn, means that Kuiper belt objects likely have largely remained unchanged since the formation of the solar system some 4.6 billion years ago. This makes the KBOs the ancient remnants of the cloud of material known as the solar nebula from which the sun and planets formed. Now, to support New Horizons' ongoing exploration at the edge of the solar system, astronomers here on Earth have been conducting observations of the Kuiper Belt using the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan's Subaru Telescope. To date, the Subaru observations have revealed 263 new Kuiper Belt objects. However, in a plot twist, a large international team of astronomers, led by Wesley Fraser of the National Research Council of Canada, has found objects much farther away challenging our planetary models. Yes, hints of a hidden structure has been detected at the edge of the solar system. Observations showed that 11 of these objects are located way beyond where we thought the Kuiper belt ended in a region over 70 astronomical units from the sun. But that's not even the crazy part. Based on the number of these objects found, researchers have estimated the density of the outer Kuiper belt ring. They found that while it is lower than the inner regions, it is still dense enough to have or form a new structure. And between the Kuiper belt and the new found structure, there is a region where almost nothing has been found. Yes, a mysterious gap. But is it really mysterious though? While it might seem a bit strange, such gaps are common in other forming planetary systems, aligning our solar system with what we've observed elsewhere in the galaxy. Many observations of the Milky Way suggest that our solar system is quite unique. Since it's the only known planetary system with life, these unusual features might play a key role in making the solar system habitable. But if the discovery of this structure is confirmed with more observations, it will tell us that our star system isn't that unique after all. 
Our solar system's Kuiper Belt long appeared to be very small in comparison with many other planetary systems, but our results suggest that idea might just have arisen due to an observational bias, Fraser explained. So maybe, if this result is confirmed, our Kuiper Belt isn't all that small and unusual after all, compared to those around other stars. Yes, our space observation technology has its limitations, which can lead to biases that make certain features seem unusual when they might not be. If the new Kuiper Belt findings are confirmed, we can rule out one of these supposed oddities, a smaller than expected solar nebula. To better understand this discovery, astronomers are continuing to track the orbits of these 11 distant objects. This is a groundbreaking discovery, revealing something unexpected, new, and exciting in the distant reaches of the solar system said New Horizons principal investigator Alan Stern of the Southwest Research Institute. This discovery probably would not have been possible without the world-class capabilities of Subaru Observatory.